Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be a continuation of the review series with a twist. So these are going to be the update videos from some of the plants that I did a year ago now. So it's an extra year that I have had some of these plants. And today's plant is going to be the Philodendron Splendid. And this is the hybrid of the Philodendron Melanochrysum and the Philodendron Vericosum. So the lineage of this parent you can usually see on the hybrid leaf. So you can see the red backs from the Vericosum and you can see the longer leaves from the Melanochrysum. And a year since the last review and many years since I've had this plant, I have a few things that I would like to add to this review series. But before we get into all that, let's lay down some ground rules. So firstly, if you're one of the people that's come back, welcome back. It's nice to have you back. Hopefully this gives you a bit of an update on a plant review that you enjoyed watching. If you are new, however, I will say what I always say, there is no way of me making these review videos to be unbiased. It is my experience with my specific plant growing in my specific conditions, which again, if you're new, I'm growing in the UK in a conservatory and whatever that might mean in terms of humidity, light, dryness, cold, all of these things. So bear that in mind that this is going to be my experience. However, I do encourage you, if you do have this plant and you've grown it successfully or unsuccessfully, drop your review down below. Try to be as descriptive as you possibly can. What are your conditions? What has worked? What hasn't worked? Have you tried this several times? Have you only tried it one time? All of these things are really helpful for anybody that's looking through this plant review series to see before they're buying a plant or if they've just bought a plant, kind of maybe what to expect in their conditions. Because obviously not everybody's going to be in the UK and growing in a conservatory. You might be in Malaysia, for instance, growing in a regular household, or you might be in Arizona in the States growing outdoors. Like all of these things are important. Do kind of look let people know down below. But yeah, let's move into the first topic. So background with this plant, and again, some of this might be some repetition from the previous video. And in terms of clips, I'll try to add them throughout. I'll also grab you and do a bit of a point of view kind of site of where the Splendid is at the moment. It's not a plant that I can easily disattach from where it is at the moment, and it will make sense when you see those clips. And I'll kind of talk you through it. I'm also doing some air layering on it as well, so you can see that as well. I'll also insert some clips of propagates that I had of this plant. But overall, the background on this was, I think if I'm not mistaken, this wasn't a plant that I was I, I was kind of aware of and I did want to add it to my collection because there was a point of that kind of Pokemon situation where there's hybrids of the Melanochrysum. Do I get them all? You know, things like that. And do, I, had the spl I bought the Splendid, but originally I wanted the Glorious and the Glorious wasn't as easy to find as the Splendid back then. I think there was a point, and I'll talk about this in availability, where that flipped round. But yeah, it is a plant that I got a while back, and I'm trying to remember where I got this from. And for the people that have been here for a while, I have started updating my plant care app, and I will add a picture of what this plant, the specific Splendid, looked like when I first got it. But I've started updating my plant care app with when I get new plants in now on the date that I bought it, specifically how much I paid for it, what retailer and what the situations were where I bought it, so I can give you a bit more information. I'm also starting to take some new pictures of kind of the root system when I'm doing repots and add those in because I might start adding some of those in as well because depending on when you've got your plants or if you haven't ever repotted it, you might not know what the root system might look like and roots do give away quite a bit of information as to what the plant might like or dislike. So yeah. So the one thing I will say about this is I did get it in my care. It, it was one that struggled for a long period of time. I touched on this in the previous video. I think this, if I'm not mistaken, this was one that I was growing on a heat mat and the issues that I had with that. And I will see if I can add a video at the top there where I've talked about my trials and tribulations with growing on heat mats. But I struggled for a bit. I've had root rot on this several times. I've also, and it's a shame that I don't specifically think I've got 
I don't think I've got any photos or clips of the root system. I am thinking now, depending, because one of the propagates is growing in kind of a semi-hydro mix, whether or not, and that's in a clear pot, whether or not I'll be able to get some of the roots in terms of a picture or video and add it somewhere here so you can see what I'm talking about. But it's got relatively fine roots. At least it has done when it was in soil for me. It might be slightly different now that it's in semi-hydro and my mother plant is in semi-hydro as well. It's still not got a reservoir or it did have a reservoir, I think, over the summer because it needed watering as much as it did. But in the winter now, I've kind of taken it back to just being watered as if it was in just regular soil mixes. So no reservoir because this is one that I found can be a bit challenging. Now, my one, the leaf size for how long I have had it has stayed relatively large but not huge i am thinking of somebody like the sydney plant guy who i'm pretty sure has got this growing on a moss pole and the leaves on his one are absolutely ginormous mine i've probably had it for slightly longer than he has <laughs> but because it's never been on a moss pole it's always been on janky support sticks i think there is a limit to how big my leaves can get and i think i'm kind of there or thereabouts now with this one Part of the reason why I'm propagating it is because I do want to try it on a moss pole and I want to see kind of how it does and will the leaves get a lot larger. I've also not got an awful lot of space, so we'll see how it goes. But it's growing in a very weird kind of location because it's grown from the main stem and it's now split into two secondary stems because I did cut it and it branched out. And you'll see that in just a moment when I do the point of view. But yeah, it's a it's an interesting one that... I did. I didn't struggle that much to find it. Yes, it did have some root rot issues when I first got it, but overall, it's been an okay plant to grow. And interestingly enough, I've been to the plant swaps in London a few times now. This is the one plant that I can almost guarantee people always want a, a, a kind of a rooted cutting from it, basically. And it's really interesting because for many years, I don't think there was that many people that were aware of it. So I don't know whether or not this is having a bit of a renaissance and people are kind of becoming a bit more aware of the splendid and they want this and again this is touching on the bit that i was talking about before where the glorious was the one that everybody wanted and they were trying to find it i think that's become a bit more readily available now i don't think i see as many people searching for that as i do the philodendron splendid so that's really interesting there it wasn't something that i was necessarily expecting because again one of the lineages of this plant is the varicosum and the varicosum has proven to be challenging for quite a few of us when it comes to pests. Interestingly, and I'll touch on pests later on in this video, that's not always the case with this one. But let me pick you up and show you the mother plant. Okay, and again, apologies for the mess. So you can see the mother plant, and I'll bring you in so you can kind of see the conditions where it's growing. Ignore the filth that is the pots underneath it, but that kind of reservoir isn't ever really full. I was it, and I've only just recently watered it, I think two days ago. You can see some of the oldest leaves. You can see that there's some speckling. I've had to switch off the fans recently, so there's maybe a bit of mildew growing on there. But you can see some of the slightly large leaves. You can also see the LED strip behind it. And you can see where it started to split into more than one vine. Actually, no, there's only one vine. Apologies. I thought it split into, oh no, it had. And I've taken a cutting from that bit there recently, and you can see where that node is activating. But you can see that I've kind of got it trailing around there, and it's kind of very leggy, and I do need to chop it back, which is part of the reason why I have started to air layer it. And that is my preferred method of air layering at the moment. It is damp sphagnum moss in a clear plastic cup that I slit and kind of add the moss in and then wrap it in some cling film to keep that moisture in for a bit longer and I'll replenish that when needed. You can see here, this one, this leaf got a bit stuck. I'm assuming some of that slime on there might be because growing in a conservatory, I have the occasional slug. But you can see the next leaf was completely fine, and there's a new one coming in currently, and I'll see if I can get this to focus. There you go, and you can see some of that blushing that's happening on the leaf. But yeah, overall, it's doing quite well. But yes, I will be chopping this back down a bit quite soon. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a better indication of my actual mother plant. Let's move into the next topic.
So looking at speed of growth with this one, it's an interesting one because it can be a bit of a slow grower, at least in the winter months. I think, again, I'll benchmark it against the golden pothos. If the golden pothos in the summer will bring out two or three leaves and maybe one or two leaves in the winter, this one might bring out one to two leaves in the summer and maybe one leaf a month. By the way, these are all monthly figures. One leaf in the winter, maybe one leaf every month or two. So it does slow down in the winter. But as I've mentioned earlier on, I've also taken it, at, uh, taken the reservoir away from it and started watering it as normal, just purely because I find that specifically my plant is very sensitive to root rot. And again, I will mention a Sydney plant, guys. I think the way of growing it on a moss pole for this one might be the bit of the game changer because then at least you can keep regulating some of that moisture and humidity through the moss pole itself. So as I said, that's probably why I'm going to try attempting it myself as well. But overall, not a particularly slow plant, but not the fastest philodendron that I've got growing in my collection by a long shot. So the next topic is ease of propagation. And I do have a bit of an update with this specific plant because I've had to propagate it a few times recently. So the this was a plant, and I'll start off with a... Less fun story, more stressful for me. But um, the most recent, for instance, London uh, plant swap that I went to, there's a lovely person there that we'd kind of arranged to do a swap. And this was the amazing person that I got my rooted cutting for the philodendron Dean McDowell. And we've been going backwards and forwards. And when asked, they mentioned that they wanted uh, a splendid. And I'm just like, great, I've had quite a few of them trying to root out. I was trying to propagate some of them in moss and some of them in water and the water ones were doing really really well and then all of a sudden something happened and I had multiple cuttings in there I think four or five different cuttings because I the person just wanted the one cutting but I was hoping to just kind of go here's four cuttings thank you so much for finally giving me a plant that I've been trying to find for a very long time and they were rooting and then something happened and they all failed in water and I've kind of experienced this now when I've tried to do another lot in water. For me, at least from my plant, it hasn't been as successful in water. Annoyingly for me, the ones that I had put in moss were wet stick propagations. And they were starting to root, but I'm just like, I feel really awkward. You're bringing me a plant with leaves on it and it's fully rooted. I don't want to just give you some wet sticks that have got some roots on it because it was taking its time to root out. Annoyingly, <laughs> a couple of months later now, those are all kind of plantlets within the actual uh, propagation bin. They are much smaller, and I, I did want to give the bigger leaves. So we, we kind of went backwards and forwards, and I said, look, would you be happy for me to just give you a very fresh cutting? I can take it on that day with some of the more mature leaves. And they said yes. So that's how the exchange happened. Hopefully, if you're watching this, it's done well for you, and it's rooted, and it's growing. If not, let me know. I've got some tiny ones that I can maybe kind of replace if I have to. But uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's an interesting one when it comes to propagation. I do think that it does better with moss. That's why I thought I'd try air layering. I think this is the first time I'm trying air layering on this one. I'm also air layering it lower than the very top node. So I want to see how that goes. Hopefully it will be all right. And then I can make the chop and actually grow it from there. But the other propagate that I've got that I think was always in pond has taken its time. I, th I find that, that one is growing a bit slower. For people that have seen my houseplant tour, and I'll link it at the top there, as in the, the tour of my houseplants in my actual home rather than the conservatory one. And I've done the conservatory one, and I'll link that there as well if you haven't seen it. But with that one, it is right next to a door which is opened all the time to take the puppy duke out to the garden to do his business as he's growing and it's getting cold gusts of air all the time it's not getting the best amount of light it's doing okay so i don't know maybe it's maybe it's a bit more robust than i thought it was but that's been my experience a year later with this plant and ease of propagation So moving into availability with this one, and I touched on this a moment ago, it's interesting because 
uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting what has happened to happen, if that makes sense. So the Glorious, as I mentioned, which is one I was trying to find, I have since got the Glorious, by the way. That's not been quite long enough for me to be able to do a review on it yet, but it is coming. Um, with the Glorious, it was harder to find, and I think more people were looking for it. And if I'm not mistaken, the Glorious is the Melanocrysum hybrid with the Gloriosum, and I'll add a correction for myself if it is wrong up there. Um, and that does get slightly wider, kind of more Gloriosum type leaves, but it's a crawler rather than a scrambler. This one, I didn't think the Splendid was going to be as popular, and it wasn't a few years back when I got it because it had that very ghost thing. Maybe, maybe that many people weren't as aware of it. Maybe enough people hadn't grown it to those kind of really spectacularly long leaves because it's interesting. The glorious, the, the glorious tends to be more reminiscent of its glorious and parent. The splendid tends to be more of that long leaf from the melanocrysum parent as well. It does have the red backs from the Vericosum, but I don't think that is the reason. I think maybe the other reason why the Splendid has become a bit more popular at the moment is because, at least in the UK, and I'm assuming some of Europe, there was a large batch of kind of relatively decent sized leaved melanocrysums that came onto the market, but people were struggling to keep that size or even upsize since then. And I think the Splendid, if you get it happy enough and maybe give it that moss pole that it desperately needs, apparently, <laughs> which I have not done. It can upsize a lot faster. So I'm, I'm assuming that might be the reason why there's such a regeneration of interest towards the Splendid. But it's also really interesting to see those kind of trends over the years of plants that may have had a bit of a heyday to have a really booming heyday or vice versa and all of these things. So, yeah, I think when I first got it, it was definitely kind of mid to low double digits for a rooted cutting. And I think it's considerably more than that now. I think it's probably higher double digits or maybe triple digits at the moment for something quite similar, at least based here. Do I think it's going to drop eventually? Yes. Although I don't know. It's interesting because if other people are having similar experiences propagating this to me, maybe it won't drop that much because I haven't found it the easiest philodendron to propagate in terms of speed. So maybe not, but I'd be curious to know what you think if you've grown this and if you've had propagates. You might just say, look, remember, you're talking rubbish. My plants have all been fine and they've been propagating really easily and really fast down below because I don't know. I can only judge on the one plant that I've got. And the problem with doing something like vegetative propagation, which is just cuttings and rooting the cuttings, is if my specific Splendid's DNA is a bit messed up, any propagate that I have that I can then experiment on will have the same issue genetically, if that makes sense. So yeah, yours is probably going to be different genetics to mine. So yours might be different. I don't know. I don't know. Just kind of like spitballing here. But yeah, I think that's everything I want to say about this topic. Let's move on to the next one. So coming into pests, Pests is an interesting one with this, and yes, it does still have some of the same issues that its varicosum parentage has, which is spider mites. However, I will say spider mites are not quite as attracted to this as they would be to a regular varicosum. So there is that to be said. There, there is also the occasional mealybug that I've got on this, and my very last varicosum that I had, the big, big varicosum, was also covered in mealybugs. They loved it. And I find it really weird because the little hairy petioles, which is what attaches the leaf to the stem, I would have thought would be really inhospitable to mealybugs. But no, apparently it's completely the opposite. Mealybugs loved it and it was really difficult to get them out of those nooks and crannies through the little trichomes on the actual petioles themselves. This one occasionally will get the mealybug, but that's it. So it does have some pest pressures, but nothing major, 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 nowhere near as much as their parentage. And I will say my melanocrysum generally doesn't have that many pests. The occasional mealybug, but again, it's my space, so it will be the occasional mealybug here and there, but nothing major. So yeah, in terms of pests, it's okay. Coming into 
care and accessories for this one and kind of more of an updated care since my last video. As I've mentioned, and I've mentioned it a few times now, I think growing on moss poles for this is key. And I will be trying that as well. Making sure that you're very kind of aware of your watering. With this one, if, if everybody else is experiencing the same issues that I had, generally I will like this plant to go not necessarily entirely bone dry because of that finer root system, but I'll let it dry out enough before I water it. So, and I know that's a very vague way of saying it, but I don't know how else to describe it. It's, I won't let it dry out the same way that I would let a Sansevieria dry out for maybe a few days afterwards, or even a ZZ plant. It's not going to be anywhere near as much as that. But uh, I think the best way of describing it, maybe so you can benchmark it against yours, if you're very confident in growing begonias, I will water this at the same time as I would water begonias or even um something like calatheas but again i'm also realizing that this might be a bit of a false statement to make here because i have changed the way that i care for my begonias and my calatheas drastically since i first started because when i first started i was doing what everybody else was doing is keeping them evenly moist at all times and i found i rotted out so many plants so quickly and actually with those i will let them go towards dry and then water them so it's very similar to what i do with this plant purely because of those very fine root systems. And I found it has worked well. Does it mean that it's also potentially slowed down the growth a bit? Probably, but I've never been able to fully get it 100% happy. So I, I'll always try to err on the side of caution. And I think that's the big thing for me. Uh, yes, it, it has liked pond. Yes, it did like growing in an aroid mix. But other than that, it's 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 relatively straightforward. So if you can grow a melanocrysum or if you can grow a varicosum, both of which I find tend to be slightly harder to keep happy than this, you should be able to keep the hybrid happy for longer. And it kind of rings true because as with most hybrids, and I'm thinking because I'm obviously dealing a lot with puppies and Duke at the moment, and I will see if I can add a little picture here for the people that want to see a bit of an update. But yeah, it's... Anytime you get a mix of DNA that's happening, especially when you're looking at hybrids, the, the mix will always prefer the stronger genetics from either parent, basically. So generally speaking, not always, generally speaking, the hybrids will be better at dealing with external stresses, potentially, or certain issues, more so than the individual separate parentage, basically. So as I was talking about before, with the varicosum, it has a propensity to get spider mites a lot this one maybe isn't as attractive to spider mites so it doesn't get them to the same level at least that has been in my experience so it's things like that that will kind of make this different and i think actually the fact that it doesn't like to go fully dry thinking about it is very similar to how my melanocrysum is so it's very similar to that so it will take away from both of the parents i i would always say if you're looking to get hybrids look at the care of the two parent plants and if you can kind of cope with that that might give you an indication even if there isn't a lot written about that specific hybrid start with the kind of care that you might give either one of the parents and that will give you a guidance as to what it needs to be because it will like one or the other more on different things so for instance pests or watering or humidity all these things and just start from there and then that should help guide you at least in the beginning if there isn't that much information out there on a specific hybrid but coming in to final thoughts for this one and some of it might be similar to my previous review but some of it might have changed. So let's go to the usual thing that I do, which is knowing what I know now, a year since the last review as well, and a year more of owning this plant, knowing what I know now, would I purchase this plant if I didn't have this? Yes. Would I do things differently? A hundred percent. I would have started with the moss pole a lot sooner. So yes, it does grow happily on a janky support stick, but as I was mentioning, there is a limit to the size that it can grow in terms of its leaf size and all of these things. And I think some of the other stressors 
from the outside environment could also be solved by some of that as well. So yeah, to get those bigger leaves, I think I would buy this, but knowing what I know now, I would change my care to match that basically. And I probably would have started it straight into semi-hydro to begin with, because I've had less issues with this in semi-hydro than I've had in actual soil mixes. I am sure some of you would probably disagree with me on here. Please do so in the comments down below and let me know why and let all of us know why, because I'd be really curious, not just for everybody else's sake, but for very selfish my sake as well. I'd like to see maybe what you might be doing differently to me if you're having better success in soil. And coming into the scoring of this plant, zero, one being the worst, 10 being the best, I would probably give this a solid seven or an eight purely because in my care and my conditions, it hasn't been the most straightforward philodendron. And again, this is my scoring. I'm sure you might have different ones to this. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's, it's a decent philodendron. It didn't really excite me until I started to see some of these people that are growing it on moss poles and they're getting really huge leaves. Interestingly, uh, one of my propagated cuttings was given to Claire from the Jungle Haven on here and she shared a picture recently and i'm just like oh my your the propagate of my plant is so much larger than my parent plant and it looks amazing claire you have done a great job with it and i think it is bringing you a lot of joy which i can kind of tell by how well you're kind of treating it um but i think there's a difference in how me and claire are growing it so uh, i will take some inspiration from claire as well and see if I change my conditions, will it work differently for me? See if I can get the slightly larger leaves as well. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.